All right, guys, uh, the topic we have is backups. Checkpoint provides different ways to backup your existing configuration. I would say it has like four methods to, to perform that, and each one of them has its own cons and pros. I'm going to explain to you all of them so you actually know what method is more appropriate to a certain scenario. The first one is snapshot. What it is actually, it creates a binary image of the entire root disk partition. It includes almost everything. Things like checkpoint blades, configuration, operating system, um, hotfixes. It can be performed via CLI or web UI. Um, the process is actually takes from 30 to 60 minutes uh, and it does not stop checkpoint process and daemons. It, it doesn't but it actually might slow down the production. The reason why it can happen is because when you perform a snapshot procedure, uh, you can increase CPU usage. When you perform that on the gateway, CPU is responsible for uh, processing the uh, networking traffic, and if it gets to 100% during the production hour, you might actually have some, some of the traffic dropped. You can get it dropped and that's why it's actually recommended to perform that during the maintenance window. But, it, okay, to summarize, Snapshot has almost um, everything that's, that's related to your configuration, including OS, and um, it is recommended to do that once in a while in, you know, during your maintenance window. The next method we're going to take a look at is called Backup and Restore. Uh, it works the same way as a snapshot. The only difference is it does not include the operating system, which makes the process way lighter. And you can perform that during your production hours. And um, same way, it does not stop any checkpoint process and daemons. The way it works, it creates a compressed TGZ file that contains checkpoint configuration that includes networking, routing table, interface configuration, as I said, the difference is it does not include the operating system. That's why when you actually import a backup file to a new appliance, you have to install the operating system first. Um, whilst in, uh, during the snapshot recovery, you don't have to install the operating system first. You can if you want to, but you don't actually need to. That's the main difference. The process is way lighter. Uh, yep, as doesn't back up hotfixes as well. Yes, I, I want to point this out because th it's kind of like part of the operating system. Um, it can be stored locally on your uh, firewall appliance or on the FTP, SCP or TFTP servers. The next thing you can do to increase your backup skill uh, in checkpoint environment, uh, you can perform commands like the first one, show configuration, the second one, save configuration. All you do via the command line, you just type show configuration. It has um, things like routes, static ARP entries, um, interface configuration, and um, simple things like that. Um, yeah, look at that picture here, keep things simple. Um, it really takes like two seconds to copy and uh, if you want to install a new appliance with the same configuration um, maybe you have a cluster um, who knows what you're gonna do with all these appliances um, it's really efficient and uh, if you have like a new installation uh, you can just copy that and uh, save configuration on a different appliance and the last thing uh, I want to discuss for that overview is called migrate, upgrade expert, migrate, uh, import command. Um, so the reason why I need that type of backup is basically because uh, your management server might actually contain thousands of policies. And if your company is growing, your policies might grow as well. And if something happens to your server, um, your policies might disappear and it, it can take a lot of time to actually rebuild your whole policy package and who knows if they're gonna work properly <laughs> because uh, people change some people know um, 
some admins know your environment, some people don't, uh, it can be actually fatal for their company. So it's, it is recommended to pay attention for policies for management server. Uh, so, uh, apart from that, it is really useful when you're migrating uh, to a different management server. Let's say you have a really small management server that um, can manage like five gateways, but it cannot manage, let's say, 50. And um, what are you going to do? You're going to buy a new management server. You have to move all your policies from your previous appliance to a new one. Um, you can do it manually, but as I said, it's, go it's gonna take you, it might take you a year, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen cases like that when people have to do that manually. It's, it's brutal, guys, just believe me, it's easier to do that command, it's just way easier. Uh, so I'm gonna show you on the picture here how you can actually do that. All right, so we have, from our previous lessons, uh, the distributed scenario where we have management server, which is this guy here. This is our management server. This is our gateway that passes the traffic. And uh, we want to move, we want to uh, upgrade to a different management server, which is way better. It can manage way more policies, way more gateways. Uh, how you move that? So you type in command, upgrade expert on your old appliance then you migrate policies to a new appliance, you type in migrate import. There is a whole procedure, there is a whole SK on the Checkpoint website, how you perform that, the process is, is gonna take way longer than that. This is just overview that Checkpoint has that feature. Just keep this in mind when you start your, um, you know, when you start working as an administrator or engineer for Checkpoint, just keep this in mind. That's going to be really useful for you.